So what I want to do today, I, I want to just, I want to talk about some, start talking about geometry. I, I'm looking forward to this a lot, as I've mentioned. Algebra is a, is a hugely important thing. The algebra reviews, it's a big deal because if you look at all the statistics, and I do this all the time, if you look at, at predictors of future college success, geometry is not high on the list. Algebra 2 is. Algebra 2 is the single biggest predictor of success in college in any mathematics. And so I, my goal, my first goal is to get you set up to have a really successful Algebra 2. And that means building in some algebra. And so that's why we spend so much time on this. It really is a big deal. Later, you'll thank me later, I promise you. Uh, but I'm, I'm anxious to get going on geometry because it's new, it's different. It's stuff that I'm teaching you. It's not stuff that you've been taught over a period of four or five years that you're, you, know, you have to kind of remember. Now we're starting from scratch. And so to me, that's a more comfortable position for a student to be, you know, this is what we're going to learn. You know, what, you know what's required. You know what you're expected to know, so to speak. And, and it just makes it an easier, cleaner situation. OK, so, so let's talk. So uh, in, we're going back to basics. Back to basics, and, and let me preface this by just saying that you're gonna have to use your imagination a lot. Geometry, there's a lot of, and it's kind of fun to do. Put yourself in the mindset where you're gonna let yourself have some fun with this. Don't just turn it off, you know, go and have a bad attitude immediately. You gotta use your imagination a little bit. There's some kind of cool stuff that comes out of this. It's very interesting, even today. Some things will come up that I think you'll think are interesting. Uh, but we're going back to basics. Definition. A definition in math is the same as it is in anything, just like it would be in a dictionary, right? If you look up a word in a dictionary, you're going to see a definition that's based on a bunch of other things you already know about. So as an example, if we were going to talk about Alaskan Malamute dogs, and you weren't familiar with an Alaskan Malamute dog, I would probably try to give you some kind of a definition that relied on stuff you were familiar with, maybe other kinds of dogs that you were familiar with, right? Okay, so same is true in geometry. Okay, so, so in geometry we do the same thing. We have to define new things in terms of things that we already know about. Later on we're going to, we're going to talk about, for example, when we talk about uh, classifying quadrilaterals. You know, we're going to talk about quadrilaterals in terms of sides and angles and stuff that at that point we're going to be really familiar with, right? That's how, our, that's how we'll define them. But would you agree that at some point you just have to start at the start? And sometimes things are so basic that it's difficult to even really define them in terms of something else. There are some concepts like that in geometry that are just so simple that we can't even really define them that you can't define them without using, you know, like for example, a point. How can you define a point without using the word point? It's just impossible to do. A point is something that's so basic and simple, and we'll talk about it, but there's no way to define it. And so we call it an undefined term. We're going to look at three undefined terms today, point, line, and plane. And that's really the extent of what we're going to do. We're going to talk about points, lines, and planes, and just a couple of definitions that relate to that. I got a little homework assignment for you to do that's related to that. I'll talk about that at the end, you know, what that might look like. But, but that's it. That's our goal for the day. Uh, so undefined terms are just so simple, I think we'll all be able to agree on what these things mean, but we just can't really define them, right? We're just going to sort of explain what they are, and we all get a mental picture of what they are, and we can talk about some characteristics of them, but we can't really define them, okay? What about a point? Point seems so simple, and it is. What do you know about a point? Somebody throw something out there. What's a point? It's okay, a dot. A dot. A lot of times, and that's a good place to start. A lot of times, if we're going to talk about a point, we would, like, I would say something like this. If I drew that, that's my representation of point A, okay? And it's a dot. Is a point technically, is, is it literally a dot? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Is it literally a dot? Is that thing up there, is that, is that actually a point? Well... I'm going to say no. Let's talk about the geometric meaning of a point now. The representation is a dot. What else could you say? Yeah. It's where two lines meet. Okay, there's a good one. Okay, it's where two lines meet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The intersection of two lines is a point. That's correct. Okay. What about what about a point? I mean, how big are they? 
in physics, we would say something is point-like, but that's not helping us. We want to know what a point is. What is it? Precise. Very precise. In fact, maybe even infinitely precise. How big is a point? What do you think? You don't have to be right. I mean, just what, what's your, what, you, you probably have never talked about this. What's your interpretation? What do you suppose, how big do you suppose a point is? However big you want it to be. Um, okay, no. It's a good place to start, but it's, but it's not right. I mean, it's a good place to start, but it's, it's, it's not right. A point is, there's a, we're, gonna, we're all going to come to an agreement that a point has a definite, we've we got an answer to this question. Okay. Now, my, I'll give you this. I'll give you kind of partial credit on that. The point that I draw on the board might depend on how thick my, my pen is, right? Something like that. So I could represent it in a variety of ways. But the point itself, the actual geometric point, how big? What do you think? Or tell me if that's even a dumb question. Maybe it's not even a very good question. But kind of, I think you could kind of say in a way that's a pretty stupid question. So maybe that gives you a hint. What do you think? What do you think, Justine? You have, I mean, what, what's your intuition tell you about a point? Does it have size? What do you think? Maybe it's a dumb question. Does it even have size? You're right. It doesn't. A point doesn't even ha it has no size. It is infinitely small. It, that's what we mean by point. Okay. If we think about in our universe, that's a weird concept. So let me ask, before we go any further, then, do you suppose there is even such a thing in reality as a point? Probably not. There's probably no such thing as an actual point. And I'll talk, give you some, I'll defend that in a second, why I think that's, that's, that's a pretty fair statement to say that it's completely made up and abstract. It, it's probably, there's nothing in the universe that even resembles what a point mathematically means. If we think about our universe, how many dimensions are there in our extended universe? Three, right? And we can think of them as being, we can draw two of them on the board pretty easily. Let's just say we've got like, uh, what, what if we call, you know, this width and this is height, let's say, and then depth is kind of this direction, sort of out of the board, right? Those three dimensions describe everything in our universe, right? There, that's all we've got. So how many dimensions does a point have then? Does it have any width? No. Does it have any height? No. Does it have any depth? No. It's got no measurable size of any kind. So when we talk about a point, how many dimensions does it contain? If it's got none of any of those, what do you think? It's a weird answer. But we would say that a point is zero dimensional. It has no measurable width, height, or depth. So it's literally zero D, it's got no size. We have to represent the point with something so we can see it, though, and so we put a dot there. Really, you could think of a point almost as just being a, a place that's, that, that it's like a place marker in the universe. A point tells us a precise location, but the point itself has no size. Bizarre concept. Okay. That's probably not possible in the universe. I'm going to take just a little detour here for a second. The universe. If, if we look at what physicists now tell us about the universe, the universe is really bizarre. And we'll, we'll have some fun with this throughout the year. But if, if you look at different scales, the universe does remarkably different things. If you were to get, uh, let's say you had, you were able to shrink yourself down infinitely, so you could get down to a very, very small scale. Bizarre things happen. Like just as an example, if, if I, would it be bizarre to you right now? I mean, I know the, we all know the answer to this question, but if I just stood here with this coffee cup and then blinked your eyes and then without ever moving from this hand to this hand, all of a sudden it just appeared in this hand. It just went from here to here instantly, was never in between, but it just like teleported itself from my right hand to my left hand without ever actually moving. That would be pretty bizarre, wouldn't it? I mean, and we could calculate, I remember in college in one of my physics classes, we, we actually did a calculation for what are the odds if you held a baseball in one hand that it would spontaneously transport itself to the other hand. And I, I don't remember the exact answer, but it was something like, on the order of, I mean, it was like 73 trillion, trillion, trillion times the age of the universe. It's about how long you typically have to wait for that to happen. But if you waited infinitely long, it would happen, actually. That's the truth. Um, so 
that would be bizarre. But if we could shrink ourselves down to a very, very, very small scale, like go down to the scale of, say, an atom or something, that would happen all the time. In fact, it would happen hundreds of times a second. Things like bizarre things like that would happen. If you look at, uh, if you look at, let's take a really simple atom just for a second. And I, I'm just, I want to illustrate a point here. Is all this is just kind of a fun way to illustrate a point. If we, if we take a hydrogen atom, what, what can you tell me about a hydrogen atom? Real quick, a little science review here. How many, how many protons and electrons are in a hydrogen atom? One, yeah, one proton, one electron. What, what's the electron in an atom? What's it do? What can you tell me about an electron? Outside the nucleus. Outside the nucleus, it just kind of moves around. Very, very, very small, extremely small mass. The heaviest part is going to be the nucleus, right? In any, in any atom. So we've got the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, and then we've got this little negatively charged electron that's just buzzing around out here. Well, if you put a hydrogen atom in a certain, if you, if you put a certain amount of energy into it, it can take different configurations. And one configuration is called a p orbital. And that's not really important. But here's what it looks like. In a p orbital, you've got the electron. Could, there's a certain, you have to kind of visualize a cloud. It almost looks like a dumbbell. You've got this cloud of probability where the electron could be over here somewhere in this cloud. Or it could be over on this side in some cloud, and it'd be kind of be densest in the middle, and then it gets a little more, you know, a little bit sparser at the edge of the cloud. But there's going to be this region in the middle here, this region in here, where the electron has a 0% chance of ever being. It's never there. It's impossible for it to be there, in fact. But the electron will routinely, it'll jump from there over to there, you know, thousands of times a second. Probably, if we probably more than that, I think it's probably in the order of like hundreds of thousands of times a second. It, it jumps back and forth across that gap, but it's never in between. It happens all the time. Bizarre stuff like that happens in quantum mechanics at a very small level. We know that if physicists now tell us that if you were to shrink yourself down even further and further and further, so if you went much smaller than this, like the scale of an atom would be something like 10 to the minus 10 meters, 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 10 meters an angstrom or a nanometer, that, that kind of scale. If you kept going and you got about, let's see, so I'd be about, oh, a trillion, 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 trillion times smaller than that. So you got down to about 10 to the minus 43 meters. You start to get down to something called the Planck length. And they now tell us that when you get to the Planck length, all of a sudden, you can't get any smaller. There's no such thing as even space at that point. That you can't measure any kind of a distance. And so the universe gets bizarre. It gets really bizarre. So can a point even exist? No, it can't. It turns out that there's probably no such thing as something that is infinitely small in our universe. It just the universe prevents that from happening. But we'll, you know, we'll talk more about that stuff later. But, but it illustrates my point that this is weird stuff. A point is just mathematical. It's just purely something that's mathematical. And yet we all know what it means. And if you were to, you know, to, to think about how math is really used for things like uh, building a, a, you know, a, a space shuttle or, or a probe that's going to go to Mars, people are going to be using lots of geometry, including points, in understanding how to do that stuff. So it's immensely useful to us mathematically. But once again, just like we talked about, you know, before Roundup, it's all made up, right? It's all abstract. Okay, so zero D. Does that make sense, by the way? Any questions or comments about that, about a point? You got a good idea what it means? Infinitely small, no size. It just pinpoints a location in space. What about a line? A line that almost maybe gets easier to talk about. What can you tell me about a line? Alec, tell me something about a line. It's infinite. OK, infinite in one, one direction, right? That's infinite length. So I, I can draw a line so we can stare at it and talk about it. So here's, here's a representation of a line. Infinitely long. What do you suppose the thickness is going to be, Abby? What do you think the, the height of that line is going to be? It wouldn't have it. You're right. It doesn't have any. It's got no measurable height. It's got no measurable depth, meaning it's got no thickness, in other words, right? It's got infinite length, but no thickness. Okay. Also, therefore, totally made up. There's nothing like that in the universe, right? There's nothing like that in the universe, and yet highly useful, right? Lines don't exist, and yet we all know what they are. They exist in our heads. Uh, how many dimensions, then, do you suppose a line is? One. It's one. 
it's only got one extended dimension that we can say has some measurable length to it, let's say, right? So a line is 1D. Okay, what about a plane? What's a, what is a plane, first of all? Can you point to an example of a plane in the room somewhere? Casey, where's point to a plane for you? Just something that looks like a plane in the room. What do you think? Hmm, what do you think? Like the board, sure. The board's a great example, right? It's a useful tool for me as a teacher because it's flat, so I can write on it. It's not a plane because a plane goes forever, right? But this is like a piece of a plane. So a plane, if we all know what we mean by a plane then, it's like a flat, infinite surface, right? That make sense? So let's take the plane in the front of the room and pretend that it goes infinitely high and <coughs> infinitely far out. So it has, it definitely has infinite width, it has infinite height. What's its thickness going to be? What do you think? None. It's got no thickness. It's only got width and height. So how many D is a plane then? 2D, yeah. Okay, so the book stops there, but we're not going to stop there. So if we continue this list, we went from 0D was a point, 1D was a line, 2D is a plane. Well, what's 3D going to be, do you suppose? And I don't care what word you use, I just want you to kind of describe, what do you think that is? What would be 3D? Any ideas? Hold that thought. We're going to come back to that question. Oh, you got an idea? Okay, it's okay. We're, we're, that you're, that's a good start. We'll come back to that in a second. We're going to come back to that, that idea. Let's go back and look at these one more time. So a point is zero-dimensional. Uh, if I can represent a point by a dot, let's focus on the line for a second. How does a, a line relate to a point? It's made up of points. You're right, it is. A line is made up of points. How many points sit on this line? An infinite number. And I think we talked a little bit about, think maybe earlier, about talking about a line. Think of it as being a, a, an infinite piece of wire, let's say, infinitely thin wire. And we're just putting beads on that, right? Like on a necklace. And the beads form the line. There's an infinite number of those beads crammed infinitely close together, right? Uh, how many of those are required? for us to define the line. And what I mean by that is, I want to be able to say, this is a line that's unique and different from all other lines. How many points do I need to identify on that line to, to be able to define it as being special unto itself, different from all others? I'm just going to start drawing some points, and you tell me when to stop. When you think I've got enough, that, that those points are going to be special to this line, and no other line could have, could contain all those points. Does that make sense, kind of, sort of? Well, you will in a second. So is that enough? Is one point enough? It's not, is it? I could, it's easy to draw a line, another line. Whoops, I missed it. But easy to draw another line that contains that point. I could draw, if I could draw in space, I could draw one that kind of goes into the board right there, too, couldn't I? Right? I could shine a laser beam, maybe, right at that. So one's not enough. Okay? Let's, we'll call this. Call that point A. How about point A was not enough. Is that enough? I've seen people shake their heads. Let me think. It is enough. Is there? Is it possible? All you got to ask yourself is: Is it possible for me to draw a different line than the blue line that contains both points A and B? Think about that for a second. Use your imagination. Is it possible to draw a different line than the blue line that I've drawn that contains both of those points? Nick, what do you think? Uh, I don't think so. You're right. It's not. There's no other way to do it, is there? If I drew a line through those two points, it's got to exactly line up with the blue. It's the same line, isn't it? So we could then say that it takes, it only takes two points. If I know two points on a line, that defines that line as being special. And we say in math, two points define a line. Okay? If I know two points, there's only one line that contains those two points. So let's 
Let's make a note of that. This is kind of a silly question, but how many points does it take to define a unique point? One. Just the point itself, right? Okay, now it gets a little trickier. Now let's look at a plane. And let's, let's go ahead and look at the plane maybe of the board, how about? So we're going to take, oh, I just did All right, so if I take, just, just to kind of make things convenient, when I draw an xy plane, you know, we do that a lot, right? We've done that in here. That, that could just represent the plane of the board. Can you tell me, you're probably going to know the answer to this, is one point enough to define a plane? Definitely not. Definitely not. you got the plane of the board. Could somebody describe another plane? And think of it in terms of a, maybe just like a sheet of plywood, represented by a sheet of plywood. Could you hold up a sheet of plywood in some way? Where and let's let's say that we could push it through the board if we needed to, right? Could you hold up a sheet of plywood in some way that you could describe that would also contain that point? What do you think? Is there a way we could do that? Martin, can you think of a way I could do that? Could I hold a piece of plywood in some way and I maybe even push it through the board where I could also contain that point? Kind of a strange question. It is. A, I mean, a lot of this is pretty strange. What do you think? Anybody think of a way? No. Justin? Push it what if I pushed it through the board? What if I made it flat like this, like a table, let's say? I held it so it's, let's see, this, it's kind of like this. Pretend this is a big sheet of plywood, and I'm just going to push it through the board straight through like that. So it, 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 it crosses the board at this line, how about? Mm -hmm. Flat surface. That would contain that point, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. What if I put one vertically and did the same thing? I took a piece of plywood and I pushed it vertically through the board so it crossed through the board along that line. That would also contain that point. We could think of an infinite number of examples that would contain that point. So one's definitely not enough. And we probably guessed that. One's not enough. What about two? What if I put another point right there? We'll call this one A, just like before. And we'll call that one B. Is that enough? Can anybody think of another, of a, just an example that would shoot that down? Is there another plane, another piece of plywood that could contain those two? Savannah, what do you think? Do you see any? Any of the examples I even gave you a second ago, would any of those contain both of those two? Wait, you got an idea? Yeah, like that, sure. What, what if I pushed it in horizontally like the table? Good job. So if I push it in horizontally so it goes through the board, where it meets the board is this line. So just imagine that it's getting pushed through the board. It's going to, both of those points are going to sit on that piece of plywood, aren't they? Right? Or I could go maybe at an angle, like at a 45 degree angle, so it meets the board right here, kind of up, slanted up, or slanted down, right? Agreed? Two's not enough. Two's not enough. Now, what if I do this? Josh shaking his head, yeah, oh, you're right. There's, there's, there's no way I can, I, I can think of, I can push a piece of plywood through and contain two of those. I could push one through so maybe it lines up with these two, right? Push it in kind of like this. Or I could push it straight in like this and get those two. Or I could push it in so it meets along that line right there, right? I could kind of push it in at, push the plywood in like this at an angle like that. And I could get those two. But there's no way I could get all three of those unless I lay the plywood flat down on the surface, right? Agree? Does that make sense? Yeah. So then how many points does it take to define a unique plane? Three. That's all it takes. Three. Now, I have to be careful about those three, though. What if I had put point C down there? Would that have worked? That wouldn't have worked, would it? Okay. That wouldn't have worked. But I have to, I have, to have it up here, right? Okay. So a plane is defined by three points. Okay. This is a good place for us to mention maybe a couple other vocabulary words here. Simple. Collinear. Now, what do you think that means? What does the word co mean? Yeah. The prefix co it means together, doesn't it? If you talk about like 
If you live in a co-ed dorm, that's going to be boys and girls living in the dorm. If you cooperate, you're coming together to do something, right? So co means together. What do you suppose this part means? Linear. Yeah, same line is all that means. So if I've got collinear points, what's that mean? On the same line, sure. So, for example, would you agree that A and B and C, the way I've got, let's make this one D. How about A, B, and D are collinear because they all lie on that x axis, which is a line. Agreed? Are A, B, and C collinear? They're not, are they? They don't lie on the same line. A and B lie on a line, but C is off that line. If I draw a line through B and C, then A is off that line, right? So A, B, and C are not collinear points. Okay. Um, what does coplanar mean? Same plane, right. So all of the points that I draw on the board are necessarily coplanar because the board is a plane, right? So A, B, and C are not collinear, but they are on the plane of the board, aren't they? What if I draw point E right there? Is point E coplanar with them? No, that's off the board, right? So if we go back to our example then of saying three points to find a line, maybe we could use this word in our definition. The three points that define a plane, could they be collinear? Like, didn't you tell me that, that these three points don't work to define a plane? Because they lie on the same line, and so I can push the plywood through and get all three of them at the same time. Right? But A, B, and C do define a plane because they are not collinear, right? They're three coplanar points that are not collinear. Okay, make sense? Okay. So now let's go back to our list. And let's the book stops there, but we don't want to stop there. We're better than that. We can go, we can go further. The book talks about points, lines, and planes. What if we were to continue our logic forward? Because that's a useful thing to do in math a lot of times. Point is zero dimensional, line is one dimensional, plane is two dimensional. What comes next, do you think? It'd be three dimensional. Yeah, so we got if we're gonna fill in that list, what is it that's gonna be, if I continue my list down here, what is it that's gonna be three dimensional? What is that? Find a word for that. What is it? So it's got to contain both width, height, and depth. So what is this? What are we What are we living in? I guess yeah. everything kind of sort of. We could call it space, right? We could call it, or we could call it volume if we wanted to. Those are all words that would that would sort of describe that, right? We could call it a volume. I think a better word is, as we know it, would be space. Okay. And how many points do you suppose are required to define a unique space? What does our list seem to be doing here? Is there a relationship between the dimensionality of a geometric object and the number of points required to define it? How do these numbers seem to be related? The number of points is what? One more. One larger than the dimensionality, right? And so if we want to talk about something that's 3D, like a space, how many points are required? Four. Yeah, four points. And this is kind of a bizarre statement, but this is true. Our universe, our, we live in a unique space. Our universe is unique to itself, right? Our universe is defined by four points. I can draw the four points right now. The four points are A, B, C, and D, right there. There's no other space, aka no other universe, that could possibly contain all four of those points at the same time. That's ours. This is where we exist in this universe. Okay? Kind of a weird thought, but that's it. Uh, we could go further. We could go further. I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the in the class. You know, physicists now, there's a lot of the best and the brightest cosmologists are getting fairly convinced that our universe is just one of an infinite number of universes that are embedded in a multiverse. Our universe has precise, you know, there's definite characteristics. The, the, probably the biggest, most recognizable one being that we've got three dimensions. We have width, height, and depth, and that's it. And then we've got time. 
And that's, that's kind of how we define events in our universe, is with three-dimensional locations and a watch. It may be that other universes are very different. Maybe they don't have time. Maybe they have two times running at the same time. Maybe time runs differently in this direction than that direction. It could be lots of bizarre things. Universes could be two-dimensional. They might only have width and height and no depth. Or, even more bizarre, they might have an extra dimension that we don't have. Ours is just it's interesting to ponder this stuff, but this is all legitimate, possible stuff. Uh, if we look at our universe, in our universe, I think I, maybe I even drew this before, I can't remember exactly what I said, but in our universe, there's only room for three right angles. We only have three directions. We can only draw three lines that cross in a way so that they're all at right angles to each other. They would call that mutual orthogonality in math, but that's, you, don't, you don't need to call it that. That's just fancy. So there's a right angle. Uh, there's a right angle. And there's a right angle. Does everybody see that? Okay. There's only room for three. In a four-dimensional universe, there would be room for a fourth. How could that be? We, there's no way to visualize it, but there would be. In a five-dimensional universe, there would be room for five lines that would all meet at right angles. There's no way for us to possibly conceive of what that looks like. The best we can do is kind of look at what maybe a shadow would look like in a four-dimensional universe, and a shadow would look like a three-dimensional thing, a shadow of an image, you know, like just like a regular shadow in a four-dimensional universe, and we can kind of get a sense of maybe what that might look like in our universe, but you can't possibly conceive of what the universe would what things would look like, because we don't think that way. I've got a great way to illustrate that. Sometime when we have a little break in the action, I, I can do an exercise that'll really give you some insight into how that, how to think about that. But, but anyway, so what's really cool about this, what I want you to see is that the thinking that we did here is exactly the kind of thinking that mathematicians and physicists would do if they were gonna try to explore what things would be like in this alternate universe. It would take how many points, let's say in this hypothetical four-dimensional universe, how many points would it would be required to define a unique 4D universe? Five. Uh, it'd be five, absolutely. Right? It'd be five. We know that for a fact. That's the way it would have to be. So, you know, it's, I don't know, I just think that stuff's interesting. You can take a simple concept like this, and it's so consistent that you can just kind of think forward, and you can actually start to envision bizarre things, you know, think about what it would be like in a completely different universe. Okay, real quick, just so we can do the homework. Uh, I, want, I want you to know about a couple things here. Um, when are we out of here? Four oh my gosh, four minutes. Oh, we may not finish this. That's all right. Okay, I don't think we're going to finish today. <laughs> we'll just call it there. We'll pick it up on Wednesday. I'll put the assignment up if you want to just take a look at it. But.